morning. Here we are, Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. Larissa, my video diary. Um, tired. I'm tired. Totally tired. Yeah. So yesterday... <laughs> yesterday, I became a recognized victim of a sexual offense. Yesterday. I'm really angry. I'm really disgusted. And I'm less disgusted with the person who is the sexual offender than I am with our justice system. And law enforcement in general. So... I am a survivor of vicious assault, number of vicious assaults where I have been drugged and um, I don't know what was done to my body, you know, um, as well as, you know, being held hostage and raped repeatedly. Um, have blood dumped in my house, in my house, you know, all these horrible things that law enforcement has never done anything about. Right. In fact, I was treated as though I was a perpetrator as opposed to being the victim of those things. So yesterday, yesterday, I'm on my way home and I turned the corner in my, in my vehicle and there's this guy with his ass hanging out, like he's bent over, over his, over the, over the driver's side seat of a vehicle with his ass hanging out, his old man ass hanging out, jerking off right there in the middle of the street, literally in the middle of the street, literally in the middle of the street. So I pull over and it looks like a homeless guy. He looks like a homeless guy, except that the jacket that he was wearing looked very expensive. And then he had on sweatpants and, and like prison sandals and, um, the sweatpants were down around his knees and his ass is hanging out underneath his coat. Like it almost looked like maybe he had broken into the car and grabbed the jacket out, to, out of the car and put it on. That's kind of like when I pull, when I was pulling around the corner, that's when I saw this guy's butt. I'm like, that, this is what I thought. Oh, this guy's breaking into this car. That was my initial thought. Here's some some homeless guy with no ass and his sweatpants are hanging off and he's uh breaking into this car and anyway he's jerking off is what he was doing. So I pull over and he sees me talking on my phone, pulled over, and he gets into the vehicle and closes the door and continues jerking off because I can see his arm going. And the police are like, okay, when I call dispatch, I'm like, are you going to stick around? I'm like, no, I'm not going to stick around. I'm going home. So I do. I start heading home and they want to talk. Then they want, I'm, and they've called me twice. I'm like, do you want me to come back? Do you want to talk to me? I'm like, no, no, it's okay. I'm like, all right. So I keep going because I, I really don't have time for or want to deal with this. Anyway, they call me and I have to pull over on 17 and they come over out on 17 and our, hey, Mr. Tick Bag, there was a tick, there was a tick on this bed crawling around on mummy. I, I'm sure it came from you. Anyway, maybe a tick will bite me and I'll go into anaphylaxis and die. So I'm, I would be, that would be awesome. That'd be great. Um, nice big shit cherry on my shit Sunday, right? So they bring me an incident report and they give me this these papers stapled together about something called Marcy's law about victims rights. I about lost it. Like I give a shit. Like I, I, I am not, I was disgusted by seeing this, this old man's ass out in the middle of the street, but I, I, I did not feel physically or sexually assaulted by him. I felt disgusted by the fact that there's this guy who, for whatever reason, I mean, if, if you're jerking off in the middle of the street, there's something wrong with you, right? Like, so you've been, you've been failed by society, right? Society, society has failed to help you. 
um, or you have failed to help yourself or whatever. There's like a whole bunch of like, like, oh, this, this, this person, um, that type of behavior is common in dementia patients, right? So this could be some little old man with dementia who's been pushed out on the street because the, the home doesn't want to take care of them. Kind of like what they're trying to do to my mother-in-law right now. She has dementia and she's a pain in the ass and they don't want to deal with her. So they're trying to find someplace else to put her, right? Because she's physically high functioning, right? But she was always a bigot. So she's not going to be any different now that she has dementia. It's just worse, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. So they don't want to deal with her. And, and, and she's, and she's, she's mean. She's a mean bitch. So I think about that. I'm like, oh, okay, this could be my mother-in-law out in the middle of the street. Because, like, up in Roanoke Park, when she was in Roanoke Park, and this was, you know, 15 years ago now, 18 years ago now, there were times where she'd be walking around with no pants on outside. This is a, this is, this is a symptom of dementia. Plus, she's a, she's a junkie, and she was on all kinds of drugs. So this guy could be on all kinds of drugs and have dementia, and here he is. You know, he might have thought that that was his car. I don't know. Maybe it was his car. I don't know. I don't know. All I know, a little old man with a little old man ass out in the middle of the street, bare little old man ass. It looked like when you, you, you his butt looked like Otzi, the, the, the frozen, the frozen guy, <laughs> you know, like he, he, his bum looked like mummified bum, like just bags of skin hanging off his ass. Just flaps of bags of skin hanging down uh, with a crack up the middle. I'm just like, I was like, I'm seeing what I think I'm seeing. It's a little old man ass. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more disgusted by the fact that there's, that that's able to happen. Right? That's dementia behavior. It's dementia behavior. Mm -hmm. They give me this pamphlet on my victim's rights. And I'm just like, ugh. Uh, cop, she's like, well, how did you feel? I'm like, exasperated. She's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, there's, there's, there's some disturbed people that live in, that live in Saratoga that have been harassing me. And I'm like, and I turn around, I turn a corner and now this, <laughs> now this. And dementia is not a mental health disorder, right? Dementia is a, is, is a, 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 um, atrophy of the brain. It's an atrophying of the brain, right? You get, there's a, there's a buildup of, of brain plaque. Sometimes they call it hardening of the arteries. What, what it's 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 like it's an oxidation of the brain tissue. So the brain tissue is mostly fat, right? It's not it's not muscle. The brain isn't muscle. The brain tissue brain tissue is mostly fat, and it conducts electric impulses. It's it's like it's our CPU, right? It's our CPU, and so fat cells hold toxin when you take anything in you know particularly metals particularly metals so like when you're taking medications or whatever that have metals in them say like lithium or whatever or if you have exposure to metals or you're ex you're exposed to environmental pollutants it's your fat cells that hold on to them right your fat cells expand they they have they store all of those things right and when you lose weight they shrink and they expel what's in them, right? Well, the brain's mostly fat and the brain, you don't, when you lose weight, you don't, you don't lose brain mass, right? You can get skinnier around the waist or wherever, but you don't lose brain mass when you lose weight. So your brain constantly holds on to the, these, these environmental toxins. And that's largely what they have found is, or what, what they attribute to, to plaque, the plaque buildup in, in, people with with uh degenerative brain disorders like like dementia uh dementia or alzheimer's whatever um and 
there's also some evidence of heavy metal or metal tech toxicity in those who who have autism or on the autistic spectrum why chelation therapy has has shown to be helpful in cases of of um in some cases of autism and that makes me wonder like if you do go through chelation therapy with um people who are showing early signs of dementia or if you know you've had had um exposure right overexposure to heavy metals or metals in general um if it will lessen your your proclivity to develop such disorders right because your brain holds on to that and and chelation therapy um helps to draw it draws metal out of organ tissue right because your organs generally have a, have a harder fat than just like the fat that's subcutaneous underneath your skin Anyway, anyway, after everything I've been through, I get this piece of paper that I, I, and I was so angry. I said, I said, is this, is this standard procedure with, with victims of sexual, of sexual crimes? She's like, yes. I'm like I have never seen this paper before. And I think it's all about like the, the, her partner's like, oh, well, you know, it's probably, it, there's a lot of like mentally ill people out there and we got to do this, that. And I'm like, oh, I said, so this is, so was this all just like staged to try to convince me to support Gavin Newsom and whatever the fuck his prop one bullshit is, you know, I, I have zero trust in particularly Democrats coming out and talking about mental health issues after what I saw with the Industrial Areas Foundation, bringing that 15, 18 years ago, 20 years ago, 18 years ago, out to California as one of the three prong um, uh, mental health, transportation, and what was the other one? Housing. They've done nothing for transportation, right? And there's been nothing done for housing. And they abuse people who get diagnoses that are, and, and you know, so if you're a person who gets a, a wrong diagnosis, right, you get that label, then you get harassed, right? You don't have rights. So no, there's nothing from the government that I will support for mental health. Nothing. Because I don't trust them. I don't trust them. They, they will give labels to people who don't have mental health issue, but don't agree with them so that they can shut them up and drug them against their will. And they do that. They do that. They did it to me. But then you have people like my mother-in-law who, on top of having dementia, I believe does have a personality disorder. She has some sort of mental health issue because she's been like this ever since I've ever known her. Right. There's personality problems. There's there's it's it's not just personality. That's it's. There's something wrong with her. Right. But you have these people who have these needs and then they don't get any help. And so I, I just I just don't trust the government because they they abuse people. They abuse me. And I, you know. There's a new batch of homeless folks in Saratoga um, that are in town, and not all of them are new. So I saw there's this kid, Andrew, who um, is into hallucinogens. I know because we he talked we talked about it. Um, anyway, I turned him in when he told me he was where he was buying them, and that there was somebody down there selling them. So I turned him in, um, and he was gone for a long time. Well, about like two, three weeks, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I see him again. And then there's a couple other new homeless people I see in town, you know, walking around wrapped, wrapped up in sleeping bags with, you know, shit sticking out of their hair and stuff, you know. Oh, hello. So there's new, there's new, there's new little group, new little enclave around. 
And so maybe this guy, Mr. Flapjacks, Mr. Wrinkly Flapjacks out in the street, jerking off. You know, and as an assault survivor, it wasn't somebody like that who assaulted me. It was somebody that lived in my apartment complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy jerking off in the middle of the street, he just doesn't have his own bedroom to jerk off in. It's all disgusting. It's all disgusting. It's all disgusting. All of it. Gavin Newsom. King of the disgusting. Yep. Democratic Party. DNC and GOP. Two ends of a dirty Q-tip. Oh my God. Two ends of a dirty Q-tip. Anyway.